All right, so the only thing we know really is a suspected CSF leak out of the doze, but not currently. Hypermobility, not sure of Ellers Danlos or anything in those categories, uh, and several symptoms that we're not going to get into. Now, the imaging itself, let's show that to you. And I'm going to say there was really no big smoking gun. We have moderate narrowing of the jugular veins bilaterally. So anybody with a CSF leak, we know that we want your veins to be optimized, uh, which I think we did today. Uh, we ended up adjusting from the left and anterior. Uh, the way your left jugular is, since it's on the outside of the atlas, just adjusting from left to right would help that. Um, we'll show you imaging in a moment where we ended up going more anterior than uh, you would typically think, but at least from the CT scans, uh, that's what we got. Now, the interesting thing is when we look at your hypermobility, and the this is left head rotation, uh, this looks okay here. This whole right side looks okay with left head rotation. The atlas does slide and rock up significantly high up towards the skull, and it, and it kind of moves in a funny way. C1 comes off of C2, the rest kind of look okay, except that there's a paradoxical rotation there that will show you in a better, a better rotation, a better shot. But it's basically left rotation, right rotation, left, 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 um, which puts a lot of torque in here. Uh, so let's take a look at this. So as far as our current working diagnosis, we think it was the um, sleeping on your stomach that really did this to you. So you, we have hypermobility and somebody that slept on their stomach with their head extended and, and rotated it. And I think that's what kind of did you in here. Um, because when we look at you, there's there's right rotation. Uh, it, well, it did not fall into the categories of like your typical hypermobility or uh, where the skull is touching the odonto. It didn't, nothing was really a smoking gun looking very badly, uh, very bad. But it did, did look funny, and the way the skull rocks up in there, and then when you demonstrated how you slept, uh, I think that's kind of what gave it away. And I think that's the evidence that we're seeing here. And I, I, took, I got some decent pictures of it. All right, so here we are, looking down from the bottom. Um, let's back out. So we drew a line through the center of the frame and magnum, and then we added the atlas to it. And we can see that the atlas is uh, to the left and anterior, actually. So we adjusted you from the left and particularly anterior uh, because, well, we'll show you what the x-ray showed too. But it's mostly this view right here. Uh, then there's C2 also going the same direction. Um, and we used a vector today that you had not been, they have not used on you in the past. Um, we saw a little retrograde of the contrast going the other direction instead of it going into the heart, all of it. Um, so we could say you were, have some sort of a slowed drainage in there. Uh, I don't think it's enough to be frank pathology, but since we were taking inventory of the Vetus drainage, and it's worth mentioning. Uh, more views of it all the way around. I thought I should document it. There's a good view of that indentation there, uh, other indentation. Uh, the atlas has gone up that way. Indentation. All right, so there's your left head rotation, your right head rotation, showing how much the atlas is coming off of C2. Uh, that definitely was excessive. There we go. So atlas goes this way with left head rotation. C2 is going uh, paradoxically the other way. That, that joint space is open. The rest of them are closing. Uh, so left rotation is occurring all the way through there. Um, and we've seen this with hypermobile people before. They get that paradoxical movement in there. This is the other side. It actually looks beautiful. Uh, same thing, right rotation, do the same paradoxical movement. Everything closes except for C2 on C3. Um, yeah, it looked a little funny in there. Um, here's a good shot. So left head rotation, you see how far the atlas is going up to the right. Right rotation, you see how far it goes up to the left. And it's worth mentioning and showing that your styloids are beautiful. Uh, there's no styloid processes that are calcified. Uh, and so you're, you're picture perfect there. Uh, let's, so we did some alignment views here with the left and right head rotation. Let's get a, um, 
Yep, left rotation. So we see how far the atlas goes to the right with left head rotation. See how far C2 goes uh, that way. And C3 actually is not moving. Well, you'll see, we compare it to the other side. And, and the other way, the C, C3 lines up perfectly with C2 when you do this rotation. So this is left head rotation. And again, it wasn't really a smoking gun, but it was noticeably that doesn't wasn't moving right. Um, this is right head rotation. You can see how far the atlas goes to the left. Again, the rotation of C2. There you can see how it superimposes. Um, um, oh yeah, so let's open that up a little bit better. So there's, there's the jugular open from the front. So there was no entrapment uh, from the front on anything. Um, what else? The atlas orthogonal x-rays. Uh, this is where the, the x-rays do agree with the CT when it comes to uh, laterality. Uh, the rotation doesn't quite do it justice. Um, here you can get an idea how, how the whole head is anterior. The, the curve looks beautiful from the side, um, except that we, we know that the jugular vein is being compromised. So you can see this anterior slippage, and that's kind of an interior uh, indicator that we went more anterior. So how did you do with that vector today? Very good, yeah. Uh, I noticed an increase in proprioception, um, specifically in my left, left foot, um, but kind of overall. All right, so thanks for mentioning that, because that was, that was a component with and I don't want to say Ehlers Danlos, let's just say a connective tissue. We find that they lack percept proprioceptive. Uh, they can be in positions that somebody else would be in pain being in that position, but they can somehow tolerate these uh, hypermobile, exaggerated positions. Um, so proprioceptive seem, a lack of proprioceptive seems to be part and parcel for the injury. So I'm very grateful that when we adjusted your atlas, you got more proprioceptive. And we muscle tested you, and the strength strength was restored into your lower extremities. Your left lower extremity wasn't really turning on, but once we adjusted the atlas, it did. Um, any questions? I don't think so. I think we've covered everything. Okay.